All right, I've got another Sudoku variant for you today. This one is called Aero Sudoku. Um, the standard version also has some little killers, so I'll talk about those in just a second. But first of all, the arrows. Um, the way an arrow clue works is you have a circle, and then there is an arrow extending off of the circle somehow. It could be, it could bend, it could go all over the place. Um, but the way this works is the circle, the digit in the circle has to be the sum of the numbers on the arrow. So for example, two, three, four, the sum of two plus three plus four equals nine. The nine is in the circle. So let's see, and this wouldn't work with this other arrow, not possible, but there you go. You could also have um, a circle that is just two cells um, like this. You know, you could have a four with a one and a three or three and a one. The the digits don't have to be in order here. I did two, three, four, but this could also be four, two, three. It could be in any order. Um, but the point is the sum of the digits along the arrow is the number in the circle. Um, now you can also have something like a circle here with the uh, arrow going like that, for example. Um, and then you could actually have a two here potentially because you can, you can repeat a digit along an arrow as long as it doesn't violate normal Sudoku rules. So like this nine arrow up here, you, we couldn't repeat a digit because they're all in the same row, same with this four. But with this two, you could repeat a digit here and here. So you can have repeated digits sometimes on arrows as long as it doesn't break normal Sudoku rules. Um, so the thing to think about when you're starting with an arrow puzzle is... Let's just clear that out. There we go. Um, options. So if we have, for example, an arrow that's four cells long, the minimum you can put in there would be one, two, three, and four in some order. And the sum of one plus two plus three plus four is 10. So this is actually an impossible arrow. You can't put a 10 because we only use the digits one through nine. Now, this puzzle doesn't have them, but some, some puzzles will actually use arrows that are bigger, and then you could have a two-digit total there. Um, you couldn't have 10 because you can't have a zero, but in those you would have, uh, you know, you could have a, a 12 as the total, and then you could have more digits, but um, this puzzle doesn't have any of those uh, today. Um, the, uh, so the things to think about are your possible things. So we know that 10 isn't possible. Um, so you can't have a four cell unless you have repeats. Now, if you have repeats, then, you know, something like this, this would be possible because you could have a one right there and a one right there. And this one could be a two and, uh, let's see, we could do, there we go. We can do one, two, one, two. So we can actually make this as small as a six. Um, so knowing that that's the smallest you can do. Six is the smallest, so you could say this is a six, seven, eight, or nine. Even though we don't know what these digits are, we know it could be as small as a six. Um, and you know, if you have a, a a two cell arrow, then you could say, well, it can't be a one or a two. It could be a three. It could be as small as a three, on up to nine, because you could have one and two over here. So you could have it as small as a three. So those are things to think about. Um, and then once you start getting digits in the grid, uh, like let's say we had um, a, a two here already. Well, now this can't be three anymore because to be three, it would have to be one and two. Uh, if this was a one, then you could actually eliminate three, which has to be one and two. You could also eliminate four, which would have to be a one and a three. You could still have a five because this could be two and three. So think about the possibilities and you can kind of write in some of the options and um, narrow things down that way. You know, if you have six, seven, eight, or nine here as options and you get an eight down here and maybe a seven up here and a six over here, now you know this is a nine because it can only be six, seven, eight, or nine and it sees a six and a seven and an eight. So write in, you know, especially the ones where you can narrow it down. You know, if you have an arrow that's like this arrow up here, that's two cells, isn't very helpful because it could be a 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine, assuming we don't have that digit there. So that one's not going to be as helpful um, right away. So look for the bigger arrows typically are the ones that are going to be limited the most, like this one. And just try and see if you can narrow down the options. You may end up with, uh, you know, a situation where you have three arrows and they all have to be at least seven. Well, then you would have a seven, eight, and nine triple. You know, things like that will happen too. Um, so look at those and consider your, your possibilities. Um, so then on the standard version of the puzzle, the, the family version just has the arrows. The standard version also has a thing called a little killer. Now the way a little killer works is it's a number outside the grid with an arrow. So we could say, um, here, let's, let's put it over here to make it easier. Uh, let's say this was an eight. That is telling you that the sum of the digits along that diagonal that arrow is pointing at equal eight. So you could have uh, a one and a seven, for example, or you could have a two and a six, and they can again be in any order. It could be six and two. Um, and, and again, just like the arrow clues, if it goes across multiple boxes, you could have say a 20 right here. You could actually have you know, five and five and six and four. You can repeat a digit as long as it doesn't break normal Sudoku rules. So we couldn't put another five right here because we've got um, two fives in the same box. But you can repeat a digit along a little killer diagonal as long as it doesn't break normal Sudoku rules. So otherwise, those were pretty much the same as the arrows. It's just that the, the circle part, the sum, is right outside the grid here. And you're going along the diagonal. And it just goes all the way across. If you had one all the way over here, you'd be you know, talking about the sum of this whole entire diagonal all the way across here. And they can go different directions. They can cross each other. So this one would go across this way. So... Um, there you go. Just think about, again, possibilities. You know, if you have, um, for example, uh, a four, well, you would know that these are a one and a three. Um, you could have the same type of situation with bigger numbers. Um, and, you know, let's say there's a diagonal across here. Well, the minimum you could have would be one, two, one, and one, two, so that would be seven. So you could actually have as small as seven right there. Um, so if this was, for example, uh, an eight, now you're looking at, well, the minimum I can do is seven. So I can only make one of these digits one number bigger. So as soon as you get, say, a three here, now you know that the rest of these have to be the minimums because you've already used up that one degree of freedom that you have. Um, and you can do the same thing the other way around. You can have a large clue. Um, you know, if you had like a, I don't know, what would be the max? Let's see, we can figure it out. So if we had eight, nine, let's get rid of our one, twos. If we had eight, nine, and nine, and eight, nine, that would be 43, I believe. So the max you could have here would be 43. So again, if you had like a 41, you have two degrees of freedom. So you can only, re you know, reduce one of these by two. And so if you had, uh, you know, a seven in each of these, then the other two would have to be nines. If you had a six on one of these, then the rest would have to be the minimums. This would have to be a nine. You'd have to have an eight and nine up there. So that's the way to think about little killers and arrows and um i hope you enjoy today's puzzle hopefully the uh arithmetic isn't too difficult for you and uh, i'll see you tomorrow